How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Seattle Kraken Franchise Mode, episode number 8, here at the beginning of the 2023 offseason. Apologies for the last week or so of no Seattle Kraken. It's been a difficult week as I had a little bit of a cold which left me without much of a voice so I wasn't able to do any big recording but now it's come back just enough that I'm ready to record and I am very excited to get this offseason done with so I'm going to try and push through. In the last one, it was a difficult, difficult first round exit to the Calgary Flames. We lost in five games to the Flames. All right, you know what? Understandably a better team than us, but it was a pretty shameful way to go out as two of our games were decided live, one late in the third and one in overtime, by Josh Manson giveaways. One giveaway and one him putting the puck in our own net. So couple that with a lot of our players just not showing up. Just no goals from Matty Beneers, two points from our captain and a negative three. Our first line center scoring one goal and no assists. Just not ideal. And that we had such good performances from Malcolm Subban, who despite going 1-3-1, one, and one, had a 9-16 save percentage at an 82 over. Now he was an 81 at the time, now an 82. It was a difficult time. So we took the first round exit. We, you know, we kept our heads high and we said going to this next season, we know that some changes will be happening and we know that we have a pretty solid team that can still make noise in the NHL. So heading into this episode, we do have a good number of questions. What's up with the goaltending? What are we going to do at the draft as we do have a good amount of draft picks? What are we going to do when it comes to re-signing players and what's up in free agency? We have our own first, a late pick, followed by one, two, three, four second round picks. Four seconds, one first, and then two thirds on top of that. So that's four, five, six, seven picks within the first three rounds for the Seattle Kraken. We made some good trades selling off close to the deadline, still made the playoffs, still got some money for the owners, still had, gave the fans something to cheer about. And now we're going to be going to the draft, trying to bolster up this team. So moving into the draft here, there are some fantastic options. You have Connor Bedard. You have a few medium elite snipers. We have some other medium elites all the way down to number seven here of the, of the top seven of the first round. And then some other top sixes and, and so forth as we move down. With so much trade capital, a first and those four seconds and some players that we're thinking about trading, I think it would make a lot of sense for us to try and trade up. Now the question becomes, what player or players are we targeting? Vinny thinks that trading a couple of those second round picks for someone in that top 10 could be a player that turns into someone who can produce and play those minutes that our guys could not do in the playoffs this past, off, this past postseason. Disappointing way to go out, but we have a strong team and we will definitely be a contender going to next year, hopefully. Thank you very much, Vinny. Mikey makes a pretty good point here saying that it might sound a little crazy, but remember in the Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode, we traded for some high draft picks and they beca became the pillars of our franchise. So with all these players, all these high draft picks that are NHL ready and with all these picks we could trade up with from the second round and maybe even a couple prospects and pieces, we could try and move higher to get one of those first five or seven picks. He says go all in on the young kids, then fill in at free agency. King GM Data, thank you very much, Mikey. Scott says if we keep our picks as is, he likes Zemer, Boozus, Buzzus, Boozas, and Sloan. Sloan could be a good offensive defenseman for the future. He's a medium top four guy going somewhere in the second round. I'll show you that I have him pinned in a moment. It's too bad we don't know about the other two, but as a power forward and a sniper, they definitely could fit the scoring need that we have. Don't overlook Hoyles at rank 62 either. Again, it's too bad we don't know more about him, but he is a gem. If we do trade into the top 10, we need one of the snipers, especially if the stats show an actual good scoring sniper, not a weird EA sniper. Maybe Marco, ranked number five here on Central Scouting. So I'll go through that in a moment. I'll go through these possible snipers when we have an idea of our coach fit because there's a good comment left by Clark saying, disappointing playoffs, but you can't win them all. I'd recommend looking at the top seven or so medium lead guys and seeing which fits with our coaching system. Giordano now, I just checked the, co uh, the coaching staff. He is now an A minus rated coach, no longer B plus. So after back-to-back -back Jack Adams trophies, he is now A minus rated. We can keep him long-term. We thought we were gonna be replacing him, but no, he could be our long-term coach. I know Jaeger is a great defense first centerman, but we could use one of those NHL ready guys as well. If one fits well into the coaching lines, I would trade up with our first and a couple seconds to get one of those guys. So comparing all of these top guys with our coaches fits by just going and looking at their scheme fit, carry, dump, shoot, all that stuff, and comparing it to our own coach on the side quickly. And when I do that, as I just did, I find that Jaeger and 
and leg do not have very good fits with our coach. Marco, Bermistrov, but basically the top three all have decent fits. Bedard has a really good fit. Ray as a defenseman has the, he's pinch and shoot, I believe. But yeah, shoot pinch, but our coach is pinch cycle or cycle pinch. And that doesn't exist anymore because EA doesn't generate prospects with the cycle. But uh, pretty much within the top five, the top four forwards all have decent fits with Bedard having an especially good fit. These other guys, six and seven, do not fit very well. So if we're looking to move up, it would probably be within the top five and not within the top seven. So it's good that we took the extra second to check that out. Jack says he definitely tried to trade up as much as possible. So besides Hoyle at 62 and Popov at 92, there doesn't really look to be any great guys. So maybe get one, if not two, of the top seven. And this prospect here, I was pronouncing his name Skrastins. It's actually Skrastinch. Skrastinch. So if I'm still saying it wrong, let me know. But Skrastinch. Trade suggestions, pat the back on the Heiskanen trade, that prospect that we got from the Capitals. Josh Bailey, he went down from an 85 to, from an 85 at 32 to an 83 at 33. Stat minuses, costing us 5 mil. Use that money to sign Ethan Bear, a prospect we have a player who we have his rights for, but haven't signed him yet. And a cheaper slash younger third liner. Maybe include him in a package with the seconds to move up for the picks. Jamie Alexiak, I know Manson did worse in the playoffs, but he's a better player than Alexiak, and you're going to need to free up a roster spot, roster spot for Ethan Bear. One of the two of them should go because you only have Bean as a good puck mover on the back end. Pulak's okay, but I wouldn't call him a puck mover. Alexiak is really the odd man out. In free agency, a mid-tier starter would be good. We're not sure if we want to run with Gus the Bus and Subban 1 and 2, so we'll have to be considering that. And for forwards, look at Bertuzzi, Miller, Tatar, Kerfoot, following that Bailey and following the Alexiak and Bailey trades. Think two to four years in the 4.5 to $5 million ish range. So thank you very much for all of those suggestions, Jack. So talking about trading defensemen and all that stuff, like what happened to Josh Manson? Adam says, I think Manson had some money on Calgary to win the series. Scott says, are we sure Manson doesn't have a little Evander Kane problem? So I don't know what was going through Manson's head when all of these things happened, but uh, I'm not super inclined to keep him to be honest. Moving over to the Discord server now before we finish up, Maddie says, bummer to see the Kraken crash out so early. Off-season thoughts, we cannot consistently contend for cups with a top six as weak as ours. The growth of Beniers and Tarasenko will help, but won't completely fix the issue. I agree with people saying that a third line center need will open with Stahl declining, but the solution shouldn't be to add yet another middle six caliber forward to the team. I suggest signing or trading, looking at you four seconds, an elite caliber forward. The addition will push a third line caliber forward out of our top six and fill the hole on the third line that we're talking about. Go Kraken. So maybe that comes in free agency as well if we use the picks to get prospects instead. But I do appreciate those thoughts, Maddie, because that's exactly what we're going to need to do on this team moving forward. Hef likes Rudolf Dinger here, two bar medium elite from Germany that we could pick if we take if we keep our first round selection without trading it. He says, by the look of Dinger at 21st overall, two-way forward, possibly elite. Pair him with the guy that we can draft later on, the, the medium elite two-way forward center in the late 80s, early 90s. We're two-thirds of the way to an elite shutdown and penalty kill third line of the future. Strongly recommend going with these two. Not opposed to using someone like Manson to move up. He's okay with letting virtually every expiring player walk. The only one that I feel strongly about extending is Philly Franchise. In free agency, I'd prefer not to go all in on an aging vet as the rest of the team isn't good enough to warrant buying high for a cup run. Just a few decent but younger guys to plug the holes will be good enough for this offseason. If we make the playoffs, great. If we don't, it's also fine. Lunchbox just leaves this saying that it's time for Jordan Cairo. He's still going on about Jordan Cairo. I would love to get Jordan Cairo, but the price has to be right. On an expiring contract, maybe picking him up at the draft is a move. I do apologize for taking a bit longer to go through the comments for the offseason episode, but that's part of the series here on YouTube. It can't be done without all of your input. If it was just you watching me play, then it would be a very different series. So I do appreciate everyone taking the time to throw in their thoughts. Hobbsy coming in with his thoughts on Discord, saying, quoting himself here, speaking of free agency, one guy I think we should look at is Josh Manson. Blah, 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 blah. Quoting himself from November 2nd of 2021. First off, I'd like 
to thank Josh Manson for making me look super foolish on my suggestion of bringing him in to stabilize the decor. He's supposed to prevent goals, not get stripped at the blue line, don't chase your man in overtime, and put the series winner for the other team in your own net. If it was up to me, Manson, you're done. That's my suggestion. Move him out. Now, I'm not saying move him due to these costly two errors, but that's a reason why. The main reason is we have a load of D-men and need more scoring. On paper, the defense next year looks like Bean Pulak, Alexiak Bear, and Chalowski Flurry. We could swap out Alexiak for uh, Manson in theory, but I'm more inclined to move Manson. We can also sign a seventh defenseman. Wouldn't be shocked if your check starts to push, but AHL time is better for now. On the draft, I would love Connor Bedard. Bedard veneers down the middle for a decade plus is absolutely filthy, and I'm here for it. However, I'm not sure how realistic it is. If Bedard is plausible, I say do it. If not, other options could be Leg and Jaeger. Interesting choices within the top seven. Jaeger is comparable to Tarasenko, but the problem is that he doesn't really fit too much, unfortunately. That's why passing on him probably makes the most sense, even though it hurts a little because he's comparable to our own captain. More options later on are Emery and Dinger, both around the 20s. We'll get those other gems later on as well. In free agency, tough to say who the target is, but we need more guys that can put the puck in the net. I also think Bailey should be gone, which may seem counterintuitive, but we can get his production from a younger and cheaper guy. One final thought, if the abs do happen to let McKinnon walk, bring him in. He'd be a massive boost to the team. And final thoughts, Pat says, hey, if we're giant hunting, why not get a fella who knows the city? Matthew Remp or Matthew Rempe, a sixth round pick from the Rangers in 2020, plays on the Seattle Thunderbirds in WHL. He is six foot eight. So we might think about looking into getting him. So thank you for all of those comments. I know it's a long process. If you don't like it, you can just skip over it. But I do appreciate you taking the time to let me know what this team, what direction this team should go in. Now, with the later picks, some of the gems we're targeting are Vince Sloan, number one, guaranteed medium top four offensive defenseman, six foot, 18 years of age, still four years away, but solid potential, which is guaranteed. Meanwhile, these other second round picks like Zemer and everybody else, I'm really frightened, I do have to say, to have all these second round picks and all these guys that are one bar, two bar medium elite in a wonky draft class. I really don't want to waste my pick taking shots in the dark. So I'll probably use one second on Sloan, but I probably want to use the rest of my seconds to try and trade up, not take shots in the dark. The other guy who's pinned is Vitaly Popov. He is guaranteed medium elite, uh, two-way forward most likely, 18 years of age, and he is two years away at such a ranking. So probably in the 60-some overalls there. And that's pretty much it for the draft. What we're going to be trying to do when it comes to when we go into the draft is looking at a, do any teams want to trade their picks? And B, can we package like Manson, Bailey, uh, our first and some seconds to try to get this, you know, the first, second, third overall pick? So let's hop into the draft and see what happens. Do any teams want to trade their picks here in 2023? Penguins, Coyotes, Blues, no one wants to trade. The seventh overall pick is up for grabs. I'm thinking about St. Louis here. Cause can I pick up the third overall pick and Jordan Cairo from you? If I were to try to do something big here, Kairu does have a fair bit of value. 83 overall, 25 years of age, no extension kicked in. He's not signed, uh, no extension going to kick in. Playmaker, he 89 offensive awareness, 43 assists last year. I have not experimented with any of this trade value, so it might be a little bit crazy, but let's see what I can do. I would love to get the first overall pick, but I don't think that Connor Bedard, I think the Penguins are really going to want to draft Connor Bedard. I don't think they want to give him up. So if I give you 24, 49, and 76, along with Josh Manson, how close are we to the third overall pick and Jordan Cairo? Manson's very good. There's nothing wrong with Manson. It's just I don't like him anymore, and we don't have room for him with Jordan with uh, Ethan Bear coming in. How close do we get at this point? Isn't yeah, woefully insufficient. Okay, understandable. What do you say now, St. Louis? Still woefully insufficient. Ah, then I don't think it's going to work then. I could take out pick 56 and try to give you, I guess, pick 44, but I can't give you much more than that. This is pretty much it. Value isn't where it needs to be at all compared to what we're giving up. So ah, I don't think it's going to work right here. Maybe I can try to get Kairu later on, but to get him and the third overall pick doesn't look like it's going to happen right there. 
Oh, man. I would really want to get a top five guy here. Bedard, number one. It makes sense that he goes to the Penguins with them having everybody retire. So I'm not going to even try to go for the first. It's going to take too much time. Skrastinch, uh, Bermistrov. Let me try to work something out here with the Coyotes. Could I give you 24, 48, 49, and 56 in exchange for Josh Man and Josh Manson in exchange for the second overall pick? Maybe in trade 56 for 88 here. What do you say to this Arizona? Still live with what, what you're sending, but not in this deal. So pretty much this is the best offer I can give. I don't want to throw in 44 because that's going to be Sloan who I draft right there. Still reject it. I could always try to get a second round pick back. I could give you 44. Maybe I take out 48, make it 56. I don't try something like this. Coyotes, what do you say to this? Still rejected. So I don't know if a top three pick is going to happen. I'll let the Penguins take Connor Bedard here. With the first overall selection, 78 overall, medium franchise. It makes a lot of sense if he goes to a team like Pittsburgh. So I didn't want to cheese the system and try to push for that when that definitely was not going to happen. Maybe the fourth, the fifth overall pick. So let me see what I can get going. If I just give you 24, 48, 49, 56, you would do that. Okay, thank you very much to the Detroit Red Wings, Mr. Steve Iserman. He didn't want to make that fourth overall pick. He wanted quantity over quality. We will trade the 24th, 48th, 49th, and 56th overall selections to the Detroit Red Wings in exchange for the 4th overall pick in this draft. Okay, so now the question is, we try to use the 4th and Josh Manson to trade up for pick number 2, or are we content with pick number 4? I believe he'd be dash, checkmark, checkmark, dash, dash. So a plus two on the line fit for the first line, Maxim Burmistrov. He has the, the golden, uh, the zone ability there. A plus shooting, six goals, 17 assists, and a plus in A plus league. Skrastinch, uh, A plus everything again. Similar to Guy Lafleur, all that fantastic. But not as ideal for the coach fit here. Crash net instead of behind the net. He is uh, balanced instead of carry. He is shoot and then balance. Actually, it's not bad. It would be X, check mark, check mark, check mark, dash. So again, a plus two on the line though. So it comes down to who's better. Or do I just take Marco? Do I just take Isaiah Marco maybe? Kimu Salani, NHL ready. And he's a better line fit, eh? I think Isaiah Marco might be our guy from the Flint Firebirds. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what the Coyotes do at pick number two. They take Skrastinch, 82 overall, medium elite, left wing sniper. Definitely amazing. Five-star shooting, crazy stuff. You got to give it to them. St. Louis Blues, hopefully they just take another four. Oh, oh, wow. They take Earl Ray. Interesting. Earl Ray goes to the Blues. And now with the fourth overall selection, we can take Burmistrov or Marco. Burmistrov or Marco, both 18 years of age, both NHL ready, once, both similar to Timu Salani, both have balance shoot and behind the net, but just energy block and balance balance. Our coach is balance balance, so I think Marco does get the edge. I'm just not sure who the better player is. 47 goals in a C-minus league versus 6 goals, 17 assists in an A-plus league. Less ice time as well. Ah, Isaiah Marco from the Flint Firebergs or Maxime Burmistrov. Central scouting number three is going to drop all the way to number five. I think we have to go with who makes the most sense for our team. But we are on the clock right now, so I wouldn't mind just calling a couple timeouts and seeing if there's some trades that we can make at the moment here. Because if we do pick at number four, maybe we want to make another pick somewhere in there. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to scour around the NHL, see if I can move Bailey or Manson and then maybe a third round pick or something to move into the first round again. So there's a prospect I'm thinking about drafting around the 12th overall selection. Ottawa wants to trade the 12th overall pick. Makes sense, they're a very good team, just that they had bad luck in the, in the final stretch of the year. I'll give you Josh Manson, who will definitely help your defense, and the 76th overall selection for the 12th overall pick. Too far off, let's add a little bit of value, but I think we're pretty much there. I would throw in Bailey, but they can't afford, they, they can only take so many uh, roster players, so. Uh, actually, I could just throw in Bailey and then um, just take a 
contract back. There you go, I'll take Austin Watson back. So Bailey and Manson with 152nd overall pick. Trade accepted. All right, thank you, Mr. Pierre Dorian. I will happily accept that. And we now have the 12th overall pick in this draft as well. So I have a couple picks. I'll tell you who I'm gonna draft with that 12th in a moment. Josh Manson, good luck in the Eastern Conference. Don't have to see you anymore. Wishing you all the best. So let's head up to the podium. Hello to all our fans watching back in Seattle. Congratulations to the Tampa Bay Lightning on winning the Stanley Cup. Very well done, very well deserved. With the fourth overall selection in the 2023 NHL Entry Draft, the Seattle Kraken are proud to select from the Flint Firebirds, Isaiah Marco. Welcome to Seattle, Isaiah. 78 overall, medium elite. I will take that. We know that he, we, I had an idea that he probably wouldn't be an 82 at this time, but he is going to grow quickly. Already four and a half star shooting. Very happy to see that. I don't know if he'll be in the NHL this year. He'll probably grow over the offseason. I could see a third line spot for Marco this year. Happy to get him in this team. Medium elite, great sniper, great shooting category. Where with Burmistrov? So he is 79 overall. Burmistrov still three and a, uh, four and a half star shooting, slightly better. Uh, if we compare the two, it's not letting me go between the two. Um, actually, doesn't no, it's broken. If I try to do that, uh, there we go. So Burmistrov slightly better puck skills, slightly better defense. They're the exact same for skating, almost identical for physical. Uh, Burmistrov slightly better for the senses and the shooting. So it seems as though Burmistrov is slightly the better player, which is what I thought. But Marco has the better line fit. So we'll go with Isaiah Marco. Now simming to the 12th overall selection. Let's see these other guys who went over here. So Leg was 79 overall, medium elite. Jaeger was 74, medium elite. These other guys going uh, definitely drops off a little bit. But here's the guy I'm thinking about taking at pick number 12. It's a slight reach, but other teams didn't want to trade their picks, so that's what we got to do. Asher Maloney. Every single team, every single player in the draft here is one, two, mostly two or three years away. This guy's 17 years of age, 202 pounds, six foot one, big boy from the USA West, close to Seattle, and he is NHL ready. That means that this guy's in that like the high 70 overalls at 17 years of age with medium top six potential. So A plus puck skills, A shooting. I'm gonna take a chance on this guy. I'm excited to see what this guy is. So Asher Maloney with the 12th overall selection, proud to select from the US development system. Asher Maloney, welcome to the Seattle Kraken, my friend, staying close to home. He is 77 overall, let's go. Medium top six at the age of 17, no less. Three star puck skills, three and a half, sorry, three and a half puck skills, three star shooting, three and a half skating, 84 offensive awareness, and the Spinorama superstar ability. Very nice. Asher Maloney, welcome to Seattle. So we get two first round picks at four and 12 with trading some of those second round picks. Hopefully it doesn't bite us later on. I know we could have taken that other two way forward, the German later in the 20s, but I think Maloney was just too good to pass up on. Now what I'm trying to do is probably try and find a trade for a guy like Bailey here. If anybody's interested in him, or they want to give me something of value. So now what we can do is probably just at least sim to the next round. We'll probably sim to pick 44 in a moment, but just sim to the next round. What else happened here in round number one? Uh, and by the way, with all the time into the comments and the draft, we'll probably cut this off season in half. So draft and re-sign, and then when we get to free agency, I'll need more suggestions going into there. Not to mention the voice is starting to hurt a little bit. Genze, Sterling, Kwong, some medium top sixes, top four D. Uh, there was Dinger here, the German, Rudolf Dinger. He is medium top six, 66 overall. He was a sniper, not a two-way forward. And he's only one and a half star defense. So you know what? It worked out that we didn't take him then for those reasons. We wanted him to be a good defensive player. He wasn't even a defensive player. Uh, woof, some medium top nines here at the end of the first round. So maybe not the best draft class. Maybe not a bad idea to do what we did with the trades. Stanton, Yuensu, uh, a few medium top sixes, a uh, medium league goalie. As usual, the, the start of the second round is usually better than the end of the first round. But with our second round pick at 44 overall, we want to take Vince Sloan, medium top four offensive defenseman from the U.S. development system in the USA West. Once again, close to home. Welcome to Seattle, Vince. You are 61 overall, medium top four offensive defenseman. Happy to have you on board. Now we're going to sim to pick number 76. Let's see who else went in the second round. 
So after Sloan, medium top 4D, medium top 4D. Uh, a lot of medium top 9 forwards. Boozass here, whatever his name was. He's actually only a medium top 9 grinder. Uh, not a, not looking a lot of like a lot of good stuff here actually. Low top six. There's that. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm not too upset that we traded those second round picks then, because even if we got two or three of these guys, they don't look like a lot of them were a lot of hits here. A lot of more misses than hits. So you know what? I'm happy to see that. Jaeger's already in the trade block, as you see that on the message center. Uh, round number three now. Uh, more medium top nines. Yeah, not great picks. So round number three, our next pick after this is a little far away, so I'm probably going to go ahead and reach now on that player we wanted to take. Even though there's a three-bar low elite player here, Bengston, I'm probably just going to reach a little bit. Oh, actually, we have another pick after this uh, with Popov. Okay, you know what? I'm going to wait on Popov. I'm going to go ahead and select three-bar medium elite Bengstrom here, Bengston, Ulf Bengston, from the SHL, 18 years of age, three bars, low elite, probably at least top six. Yeah, low top six, 60 overall, two way forward. Not bad. Our next pick comes at 24. I'm going to want to trade up a little bit before that to make sure that we get our guy. So how about New Jersey? I trade you pick number 88 and a seventh in a couple of years for 86 right now. Do me a favor. You scratch my back. I'll scratch yours. And I'll go ahead and pick at number 86. We'll get Popov right here. Hold on. 86 for 99 and a 6th. No chance. With the 86th overall selection in this draft, we'll go ahead and take v Vitaly, correct? Vitaly Popov from Estonia. Medium elite. Likely a two-way forward. He is 70 overall. Okay. 70 overall. Medium elite. Two-way forward. Bang. Let's go with four-star puck skills. Woo, baby. Not a great skater and all that, but hopefully that comes with time. At least he's not a crazy wonky prospect. A bit weird in some areas, but not crazy wonky. Thank you very much, Mr. Vitaly Popov. Next pick is at pick 184. Let me take a quick look through our team. Is there anyone that we want to try and dump with uh, who's going to be expiring who we're not going to be resigning? Eric Stahl. I wouldn't mind seeing what teams would offer me for Eric Stahl, if anything. Uh, no, no trades found, so we'll likely just be letting him walk to free agency. Maybe Josh Hosang has a little bit of value. No, what if I package him with uh, Zach Senishin here? It takes so long through these menus. No, no trades found. Maybe Jake Gardner, but if nobody wants an 82 overall, then probably no one's going to want any of these guys. Uh, all right, so I get a seventh round pick, basically. Anyone have more than a seventh? No, just a seventh round pick. So basically, you have to think, who do you want to trade him to? Send him to the Eastern Conference. I'll take a seventh next season, uh, not this season. So basically, who's the worst team between the Rangers, uh, the Bruins? That's it, right? Yeah, Rangers or Bruins. So let's send him to the Rangers. Why not? Jake Gardner to the New York Rangers for a seventh round pick next season. Jake Gardner, not bad at all. I would have liked to keep him as a seventh defenseman, but I don't want to be paying like two, two and a half million for a seventh D when I could get someone cheaper in like mid-July in free agency. So that's pretty much it for the trades there. Let's try and just make one more draft pick at pick number 184, our final selection of the draft. A couple low top six forwards just went. I'm sure there's some other good players in this draft, but it wasn't great for our scouts this year. I don't have time to take 100 shots and have a ton of prospects that we'll never use. I'd rather just keep it more realistic. So we could go for a guy who's two bars medium elite, or we could take a chance on someone who's two bars low elite. May as well for the go for the two bar medium elite between one of these defensive defensemen here. Go for the guy who's ranked higher, six foot two defensive defenseman Torstrom Stromberg. Don't mess with a guy with a name like that from the SHL medium seventh defenseman. So let's sim the rest of the draft. Let's move into the resign phase here. A solid draft for us going Marco at four, Maloney at 12, and Sloan at 44. Bankston not bad and Popov great. So a very solid draft for us here in Seattle using our resources to our benefit. Now we're going to move into the resign phase after we advance one more day. Give us uh, Stone and Hotton are going to need extensions. Scouts need extensions. Don't worry about that. And now we go into the contracts. So we have $31.43 million to play with. That means we have, and that is with Bear, McCann as the guarantees, I think, in my mind. Stahl's a question. Faust is a question. McGambrill, Cout. It's not going to cost us a ton to get these guys signed. We're going to have a good amount of money left over that we can use in free agency. 
Unsigned players, we could sign Marco, Maloney, Yerichek. Not sure about that quite yet. I'm not in a rush. And for goalies, Gustafson, we want to get him signed. And uh, Wilm as well. So I'm going to take care of this a little bit. I'm going to try to do some 85%, make a few deals happen. Ethan Bear, for example, he wants, let's see, 5.5 for four years. So I'll probably give him something in the six-year range. And around 85% of that, I'll send out a few offers. I'm going to re-sign the coaches, re-sign the scouts, and we'll be at the advanced day page in just a second. All right, advancing a day now, letting all the scouts and coaches and all that re-sign. Oh, hold on, Ethan Bear rejects the contract renewal. If you're going to change the duration, I expect you to adjust the financials accordingly. He wanted four years, I offered him six years at about 5.15 per year, I believe, so he doesn't like that. Uh, Gambrel, easy decision. I'm giving him a three-year deal to be our fourth-line center. Jeremy Lozon, three-year deal to probably be our seventh D-man. He's a 79 overall, so I think he's very serviceable. He's costing us only like about 900K. Julien Gauthier, three-year deal. Cole Lynn, two, three-year deal. Like that. Mason Shaw, three-year deal, two-way as well as he's going to be trying to continue to grow from 75 overall. Jared McCann also didn't like extending the length. Martin Kaut, easy decision, two years, one million per year. Sean Dursey's on board, very nice. So we still pretty much have the same amount of money to play with here. Bear and McCann will get them done. Eric Stahl, I don't think it's necessary to re-sign him at the $2 million range. His potential will continue to drop. He was amazing for us in the final stretch of the season, but unfortunately, I think we do have to say goodbye unless our paths do cross again. Jesper Faust, maybe. Christian Fischer, I haven't been too impressed with him. He wasn't good when he played in the NHL. Wasn't great in the AHL. Now he wants over a million dollars. I'm going to go ahead and release him. Josh Hosang, we don't need him anymore unless he becomes another AHL filler that we go after in the future. Bidner, I, abs I accidentally uh, qualified. But some of these RFA guys, I'm not sold on them. I might sign them. I might not. And for the goalies is the biggest question now, the goaltending. Are we rolling Subban Gustafsson? Is Huso our minor league starter? Does Wilm become our minor league starter? Or is he not ready to be the starter yet? Depends how he grows over the offseason. I'm probably going to let Huso walk here, even though he would be cheap. Because I don't want someone who's going to be like, let's say Wilm grows to a 78. I don't want Huso taking the starts. Wilm should be the starter at that point. So I'm going to let Huso walk at a contract with another team because I know he'll do great. Peyton Wilm, it's time to sign him up now. 76 overall at 19 years of age, has all the X factors. He was the 19th, yes, overall selection in last year's draft. He's going to be our future goaltender. Joey Decord, probably can sign him for the minors. Maybe it's going to be them two in the AHL. Gus, he could come super cheap. We don't want to cheese the system, go eight years, 1.2 million or whatever. But he was very good. Uh, I could get him really cheap for like two, three years here. Uh, he hasn't proven much, but the small sample size was good. So I think it makes sense to go up to three years. I don't want to go crazy at four, five, six years. But I think a, I think a three-year deal, I'm going to offer him even more than he's asking for. I'm going to go three years at 900K per year. So three years, one, excuse me, three years, $2.7 million is what he's going to get for really a very small stint in the NHL. He's been good. He's, I, I like him, but I think a three-year commitment of close to $3 million is pretty fair. I don't want to cheese. I don't want, but I don't want to kill myself either to try and overextend myself for something that maybe he's not even on this team moving forward. So three years, 0 0.9 for Gus. The court, I'll give him something. I'm going to send another offer to McCann and Bear. All right, let's advance another day now. Sent out some more offers. Let's see what people are thinking here. Xavier Stone, I don't like the role, even though that's the role you've had for the last year. I'm not thrilled with the role, but I accept oh, I mulled it over. I'll take your crazy overpayment to do your random job. All the scouts are happy. There we go. Jesper Foss, again, I sent him a one-year deal. If he signed it, he signed it. He's not interested, so not content with the minutes. Goodbye. I'm not going to overpay for you. Ethan Bear still rejects, and McCann still rejects. Gus does accept. Very nice. So do a couple other guys. Uh, Wilm joins the team. Okay. Ethan Bear, he wants four years at 5.3. I'm trying to offer him six years, though, to bring him to the age of 32. 5.725, 85% is 4.86. I was offering him 4.8 something, 4.9 something. Let's go six by five and see what he says to this. Five million per season for six years. Jared McCann now, 
He just wants a one-year contract. I don't really want to sign him for a one-year contract. I wanted to sign him for four years, but if he wants less, I'll try to come down to three. 85% is 3.61. So how about I even go above? I'll give you three years at 3.750. I think that's being very generous. Fost, you're gonna walk, see you later. And I'm gonna have these guys qualified. When it comes to the goaltending here, I'll send to court a little something. Just uh, here's a little one year, two way, see what happens. Advance another day now, uh, more scouts signing on. Ethan Bear still rejects, uh, Decord's on board, and McCann still really wants that one year contract. We're getting close to the end of June here, so we gotta get this done sooner rather than later. Ethan Bear, I'm not gonna kill myself with Ethan Bear. Five by six, he doesn't like. I'm gonna qualify him and get him done in July. I know that that's, those are like famous last words when it comes to Data 782, a bit too cheap in the free agency, but come on, you're asking for 5.3 for four years. I'm not, and 85% of that's like 4.8, excuse me, 5.7 for six, 85% is 4.8. I'm giving you five. I'm giving you closer to the 90% range for six years. I'll give you one last offer, but after that, I'll give you six years at 5.050, and if you don't want that, I'm gonna just qualify you. I'll, yeah, and then we'll we'll see in free agency. Jared McCann, though, I really want to get something done. He really wants that one year at 3.725. I guess we're probably gonna have to do it like that, but I'm gonna try to go cheaper. If that, if we're gonna be forced to do one year, I want it to be cheap. 85% is 3.16, so I'll go 3.2 for one year of Jared McCann. Not super thrilled on it, but I guess we have to find, yeah, reject from Bear and reject from McCann. Okay, I guess we'll just have to play games there. Here you go, McCann, one year at 3.725, yay! And Ethan Bear qualified, advance a day again. Easy decision, blah, 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 Jared McCann, there we go. So happy, so happy. Anyone else expiring? They're all qualified, unsigned. We'll deal with that later because we're not sure who we're going to put where. Maloney's probably going to play in the AHL. Goalies are signed on. Okay. Coaches, scouts are all done. Let's hit up July 1st. Professor Xavier Stone here ends up going to uh, coach free agency, so see you later. What I'm going to take a moment for now is to just check out the scouting. Are there any better scouts we can go hire? Any better AHL coaches we can hire? So I'll do that quickly on my own time here. All right, that's all done. AHL associate coach and 12 scouts all sent offers. So let's move into free agency now, seeing who is available for us with all of our money to spend, unless we do make some trades. Oh my goodness, Nate McKinnon in free agency. 95 overall, Nate McKinnon, coming off of a 49 goal, 40 assist season and 75 games played. Fits the second line, doesn't really matter when you're a player like Nate McKinnon. Oh my goodness. Let's sort by overall for a moment, looking just at the UFAs who are out here. Wow, so it's quite the free agency class. Nate McKinnon, Patrice Bergeron, Evgeny Malkin, JT Miller, Mackenzie Wieger. We got Schultz, Severson, Dumba, Lindholm, Getzlaff, Kalorn. Then you got Bertuzzi, Kerfoot, Richie, Drouin, Brown, Eller. All these guys down the list. Tatar, Mangepane, Giordano, Spezza, blah, blah, blah. Uh, for the goaltending, let's see who's out here for goalies. Marc-Andre Fleury available. Is he a guy that we think about for one or two years? At that price tag, one team interested, probably not. Maybe a Freddie Anderson. Maybe a Alex Nedeljkovic. Mm, I could see that. I could see Nedeljkovic being a very interesting option for us. He wants six years, though. That's the thing. It'll be more of a three-year thing that I'm thinking. That's why maybe Freddie Anderson or even Simeon Varlamov makes more sense. I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. Nedeljkovic, 70 games played, 902 save percentage, over three goals against. Freddie Anderson, numbers look like that. Let's actually rotate it through a few of these if they let me. Yeah, Varlamov's numbers look like this. Darcy Kemper, Nedeljkovic, Bishop, Reimer, Smith, Ranta, Jerry, Allen, DiPietro, Corpusalo, Jack Campbell, Jonathan Quick, Laurent Brassois, Halak, Dobin, Talbot, as it goes, the list goes on. Sorting by potential here as well. There's any good potential prospects want to go? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Isaac Rosen or Rosson here will definitely want to go after him. First round pick in 2021. We we'll definitely want to sign him. Maybe Logan Brown, maybe Ruzika. Pretty good options, actually. Some medium top six, some low top six guys, some decent options for us. 
especially when it comes to considering who could be some uh, fillers down in the AHL. But Nate McKinnon, man, that is crazy stuff. Let's think about the team organizationally for a second. All expiring, we can consider offering deals to guys like Bean and everybody moving forward now as well. What kind of a contract would Bean want, by the way? Uh, 5.4. So Ethan Bear, we can try to get him signed starting now. And I shouldn't be too difficult, to be honest. So we'll probably even get him for cheaper than he wanted initially. 85% of what he wants now for six years is 4.696. So let me try 4. Point, let's try 4.750 not be too cheap here 4.750 for six years let's see what ethan bear says about that i don't want to let that drag out for too long so our current 27.67 minus that 4.75 that'll leave us with 22.92 million dollars to play with give like 13 or 14 to nate mckinnon we still have pretty good room there you know six seven million ish to play with so main roster forwards one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve at the moment, there are our 12 forwards. The leftovers would be Barry Boulet. Maybe Marco squeezes into the lineup, not sure. Looking at the defense, we know that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and then Ethan Bear six. Lozon is seven, so I think the defense is pretty much set. Goaltending, something else we can think about. Do we go Subban Gustafson? Do we move Subban out and Gustafson backs up somebody like Nedeljkovic or Freddie Anderson or what? Because it's not going to take too, too long for Peyton Wilm to be pushing his way into the NHL. Could be as soon as next season. Not, probably not next season. As even if he's a 79 or something, he'll be the starter in the AHL. But the season after this one, 2024-25, he'll definitely be at least the backup in the NHL. So we're just thinking forwards here. The first line, in theory, we could push Matty Beneers to the left wing. He has 79 face-offs. We could push him to the wing in theory. We could go Beneers, McKinnon, Tarasenko. Second line, Schwartz, Trocek, Palat. Third line, McCann, Appleton, and Kaut. Fourth line, Gambrel, Gauthier, and Lind. That's a pretty solid lineup right there. Is it realistic? I don't know. He's a free agent. We say, here's a boatload of money. You're the face of the franchise. Let's go nuts. Does that sound crazy? Well... Already him going to free agency sounds crazy, but that is the reality that we have been presented with. Now that is what we will move forward with. If we don't sign him, someone else will. Colorado is out on Nate McKinnon, most likely. There's some other cool options in free agency. You got Patrick Marlowe here at the age of 43. He's still on 80 overall. I'm just scrolling through some names here because I'm looking for that six foot eight behemoth. And there he is. There he is. He is high AHL top six potential. Six foot eight 21 years of age sixth round pick of the rangers in 2020 from the seattle thunderbirds hometown boy we're definitely going to be signing him no matter what so i'll go ahead and send him a contract welcome to the kraken my man what a wrecking ball another option would be baneer second line center mckinnon first line center trocek gets traded that's also something but i wouldn't mind just baneers being on that first line playing with nate mckinnon if that were to happen, it would cost us a lot. It would be a lot of money. Not going to kid anybody here. It would be a lot of money. A big commitment. On defense, are we happy with what we're rolling with? Or do we want to look at some of the defense available? Mackenzie Weger, it's a pretty reasonable cost comparatively here. He only wants 5.55. So two teams interested. We could give him probably $6 million for two years as an 85 overall. 88 offensive awareness coming off of 13 goals, 18 assists. We don't really have room for him. So if we did get him, we'd have to move somebody out. Maybe Jamie Alexiak, but does that make a lot of sense? We already lost Bailey, another, one of our alternate cast captains. Do we trade out another alternate captain just to bring in a maybe of trying to sign Mackenzie Weger? Not sure, but up to your suggestions. Other guys here, Travis Dermott somehow is an 85 overall. Mark Giordano, other guys down here with not a lot of people interested. Uh, Ryan Graves, Artem Zub, just looking at UFAs as well. And uh, going back to the forwards here, any other kind of middle sixth or depth scoring that you might be thinking about? Bertuzzi, Donskoy, I don't want to spend seven, eight million, but if we do have that extra, you know, six or seven, maybe we spend three or four. Do we go after a guy like Manjapane, Hornquist, Tatar, someone like Yarncrow? I don't know. There are a lot of suggest a lot of possibilities here, so that's why I'm giving it a long scroll. So that you have a, a chance to take a look at all of the names, but I'm going to be wrapping up the episode there after the draft. 
Looking forward to your thoughts on do we sign anybody? Who do we sign? What does our lineup look like moving into next season? Who's in the NHL? Who's in the AHL? Do we sign the unsigned prospects? Any trades you might think about doing? May as well take a look through the trade blocks as well before we close it out. Ducks, no one too much there. Coyotes, nobody. Bruins, nobody. Buffalo, Phil Castle, Travis Zajac, Jeff Skinner, Nolachari. Tanev on the Flames, Oshi, Niederreiter, Subban, and some prospects on the Hurricanes, Blackhawks, Johnson, McNabb, Kukan on the Avalanche, Jackets, nobody, Stars, Ryan Suter, Jamie Benn, Detroit, nobody, Edmonton, Myers, and Keith, Florida, Montour, if you want to know more about any of these players in particular, leave a comment on YouTube or Discord server, I'll get back to you, Dowdy, Walker, DeHaan, Stetcher, Roy DeKaiser, uh, Nemesnikov on the on the Wild, Hoffman and some prospects on the Canadians, Predators, Ekholm, Kadri, Duchesne, Johansson and Rask. Very interesting there. A bit too much term on the contract. Devils, Bobby Ryan. There he is, 83 overall. Yanmark, Blackwell, Islanders, Everly, Nelson, Lee, Pajot, Tierney, Rangers. A lot of pieces here. RFA, Kevon Miller. What am I saying, Kevon Miller? Keandre Miller. 84 overall, 23 years of age. He's a very good defender. Uh, 20, 33 points last year, plus 19. But he's unsigned, and he requires moves to be made throughout the team there. Other prospects also listed. Senators have a bunch of prospects listed. Flyers, JVR, Atkinson, Broussard, Gagne, Obi, Kubel. Penguins, nobody. Sharks, nobody. Blues, Krug, Falk, Nudevara, Henestroza. Did the Blues end up getting a deal for Jordan Cairo? Yeah. They signed him two years at 4.750. So would have been nice to be able to get him in the third overall pick, but the, they were not really budging. Tampa Bay Lightning, going back to matching the block. Sir Mikhail Sergachev, an RFA on the block here. Yanni Gourd, a real-life Seattle Kraken, and some other pieces. Maple Leafs, Dermot, an RFA as well, and some other prospects. Canucks, some prospects. Golden Knights, nobody. Capitals, nobody. Winnipeg Jets, one guy there. So there are the blocks. There's everything you need to know heading into the second half of the offseason. Free agency. Next episode, we'll do free agency. We'll finish the offseason, and we'll start the preseason. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all your thoughts at the start of this one and coming at the end of this one. Voice is starting to fade, so it's a good time to end it there. Leave a comment down here on YouTube or over in the Discord server. The link is in the description. Leave a like if you are excited about the draft and this possibility of moving into a crazy Nate McKinnon era. I don't know. So I need to hear your thoughts on that. Green light, thumbs up. Red light, thumbs down. Need to know all your thoughts on that. And do consider subscribing if you haven't already. We're closing in on 3.5K here on YouTube. Just crazy to think about. It's been a big year of growth. Difficult with full-time work, school, and everything, but I do appreciate everybody hanging on there. Even though the uploads have been a little more stretched out than every second day. You know, it's every four or five days, five, six days. So thank you for your patience and understanding. A subscription means you'll be made aware of all the videos here on the channel, including Seattle Kraken Franchise Mode, the NHL 07 Dynasty Mode, which I'm going to get back into during the holidays, and other NHL 21 tutorials. Already put one up on the overview of Franchise Mode and uh, Line Chemistry. The next one up is Scouting. So once again, thank you so much for watching. Looking forward to your thoughts because I'm very excited for the second half of the offseason, and I will see you in the next one.